If you've been following along in the series, then you know that we've set up the CloneZilla server in the previous videos. And what I have here is just a representation of what we've set up. We have two different network cards plugged into the CloneZilla server. One is configured for my business LAN, and you can see the one here on the left, and then the one's configured on the right-hand side for my CloneZilla network. And so in this lecture snippet, what we will be doing is cloning this computer here, the 192.168.1.1. And all of the clients are going to have any range of numbers between 1 to 25 as far as our last octet is concerned because we have the DHCP service running currently on CloneZilla that we've set up. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the machines. Now what I have here set up is two different computers side by side. And you can see that I have the CloneZilla server on the left hand side and then I have the Windows 8 computer on the right hand side. And what I'm going to be doing is setting up the CloneZilla to work. Now I want to show you, I have this plugged into my private network, this Windows 8 computer. And I just want to show you that if I take a look at the IP address, I currently have an IP address coming from the server. Now I don't have CloneZilla running, but I do have the DHCP service running by default after we've set up this CloneZilla server. You can see the address information that I have here. I'm going to come back over here to the CloneZilla server and let's go ahead and turn on the CloneZilla software. So what I'm going to do is open up the terminal and I will run the command sudo forward slash opt forward slash drbl forward slash sbin and then the tool dcs. So let's go ahead and hit enter and I'll type in that administrative password. And now what we have here are the options to choose these settings for all the computers that are in the private network I have reserved for CloneZilla or I can choose to select them based on IP or MAC address. And I'm going to choose the default of all the computers. Now I'm presented with a menu for my DRBL choices. And I'm going to scroll down to CloneZilla Start. I'm going to turn on the CloneZilla service. And what I am going to use is just the beginner. So I'm going to go ahead and hit beginner. And I have the options here of either automatically setting it up so that we can save the disk of a computer or save a partition of a computer, restore a disk, restore a partition, or let me select in the client itself. And I'm actually going to choose let me select in the client itself because it gives me the option in the client, which is going to be my Windows 8 computer, to be able to pick if I want to restore or if I want to save my image. So I'm going to choose that option. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the default here for the default CloneZilla. And when my client is done, what I'm going to choose is just to power it off rather than rebooting. So I'll choose power off. And it's going through now. And it's going to be setting up. You can see that it's setting up the whole service for all of my IP addresses. And when it returns back to the terminal prompt, then we have successfully set this up. So let's get this working. And I'll show you how to do that here on the client. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the terminal. And what I need to do is a restart. And I'm going to need to boot into the actual BIOS or CMOS settings that are on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Power, Restart. Okay, now that I have the BIOS settings pulled up, what I'm going to do is look at changing my boot options. And you can see I want it to boot from the network. And I have the network boot after the hard drive. So I need to move that up so that it can boot from the network first. And now that I have the network boot saved up there, I'm going to go ahead and exit and save my configuration. And I'll let it reboot. And this time while it's rebooting, you'll see that it's booting trying to find a server from the network. And what I have here is the CloneZilla software that I found. And it's going to begin the process of loading it all up. And now this is going to take some time for it to actually set up. When I am presented with a menu, you can see that I have two different options. And it appears as though there's a slight glitch in the display of this particular menu. It still has some of the processing information pulled up. But I'm going to look at the two different options. I've got the device image or device device. And device image is going to allow me to create an image of my machine, where device device is going to allow me to directly clone a machine to a machine. So I'm going to choose the default option and just hit enter. And now the next option that I have is to use either the beginner mode or the expert mode. And I'm going to choose the beginner mode. And now I have the option to save a disk. And the reason why I don't have the option to restore is because this is the first time I've set this up and I have no images to actually restore. So I'm going to choose to save my disk. I now have the option to name the disk itself. And you can see that the image is going to be called 2013 2.18.22 and this just happens to be the time information of my computer and it has a dash IMG on it. I'm going to go ahead and accept that as the default name. However, that name can easily be changed. And now it's going to ask me which hard drive do I want to actually clone and I'm going to go ahead and use this 64 gig hard drive that I have. And I have the option by the default to skip any kind of checking or repair of the source file information. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that as well. And the next default is to check the saved image. I will go ahead and do that as well. And I can go ahead and press enter again. 
Now it is going to ask me if I want to continue, so I'm going to go ahead and choose yes because I do want to continue. And what you see is the information that's actually happening on my computer. You can see that it's beginning to copy. I have 13 minutes currently remaining. You can see that it's completed over 5% and it's increasing. And so right now it's actually copying all of the information from my hard drive and, it's, and it will be storing it in an image file on the CloneZilla server. So if I come over to the CloneZilla server, I can browse for the folder where the image is going to be stored and we can take a look at it. I'll need to go to the file system, the home directory, and then you'll see that the part image, this is going to be the folder that was created and you can see that this image is being created as we're looking at it. I will come back when this is done. And so after a few moments, my image has been complete. You can see the information that I have listed here. It basically has said that my device was 64 gigabytes in size, 12 gigabytes of that hard drive was used up, and then I had 52.4 gigabytes free. Now if I go over to my computer, my CloneZilla server itself, and I look at this folder that I have, and then go to the properties of it, I can see that on the disk itself here, it has stored it as 4.1 gigabytes in size, and so that's the image size that it's holding. Even though the hard drive is 64 gigabytes, my image is only 4 gigabytes in size. I'm going to go ahead and close that and come back over here to this computer. Now I also want to show you how to restore an image, and so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to continue, and this is going to give me a prompt to be able to shut down my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and type in reboot and let my computer reboot, and this time around I'm going to actually take the image that I've created and actually use that image to restore this computer. And so here I am again at the boot menu and it's currently running and booting back up and it's going to go ahead and boot into the DRBL information. It's going to go ahead and give me the CloneZilla options here after it loads up. And after loading everything up I'm returning back to this prompt where I can choose to work with either an image or a disk directly and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and choose to work with the image. I'm going to go ahead and choose again the beginner mode and this time through I have the options to restore disks not only save disk and so in this case I can choose to restore disk and I'll go ahead and choose restore disk I'm presented with the image that I currently have now if there were multiple images here I could actually select which image I want to work with and since this is the only image I have this is the choice I, I will choose I am going to restore it to the hard drive and so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for this one as well and press enter to continue it asked me if I'm sure I want to continue, so I'm going to press Y and hit enter. And it's going to ask me again, so I'll press Y again, and I will hit enter. And it's going to begin the process now of actually taking that image and restoring my hard drive to the image file. And now you can see that it's actually using part clone to take that image and restore my computer, so it's going to run through this process, and I'll just let it go ahead and run through. And now that it's finished, you can see it's giving me the option to press enter to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter to continue. And that'll bring me back to the terminal prompt again. And so now I can go ahead and reboot my computer. I'll type in reboot. And as you can see, I have booted up successfully into Windows. And I've successfully taken that hard drive, stored it as an image, and then re-imaged the computer using that same image.